Hey guys, Paul here again, vlog number five. So manage five days in a row, this is exciting. Uh, so today we're gonna to be, again, going through what we do each day and what kind of like, what the outcomes we're looking to achieve. So today started off uh, really early, 6 a.m. for a technical coaching session with a student. And the technical coaching session kind of actually set the tone for the day. So when I started off uh, doing mentoring, I didn't actually, get into it for business coaching. Business coaching was not my primary thing. In fact, I would argue that I was nearly against business coaching for a long part of my career, which uh, is a stupid decision, which was influenced by some poor mentorship, but that's okay. I still got a lot of other valuable things out of it. And with that call, basically we went through uh, movement quality. So one of my principles, I have three principles of training, three principles of nutrition, three principles of mindset when working with clients to become PT. And the main principle that we have is move well to move often. And this is one that creates a lot of controversy in the fitness industry because it's, it is attributed to Greg Cook and the functional movement screen. And there's lots of arguments against it and lots of arguments for it. And you know, there's research on it that shows it's not good for predicting injuries, blah, blah, blah. And there's a lot of people now saying that movement quality doesn't matter, the body is an adaptive machine. And everyone's right, but also everyone's wrong to an extent, in my opinion. And what I mean by that, is yes, the body will adapt to any position that you put in. It absolutely does. I'm not going to argue that. My question is, is that the best thing for that person's particular goals? And where are you triggering that adaptation? So for example, deadlifting or a rounded back. We're going to exclude world-class powerlifters from this discussion. They will have a thoracic spine. They will have some rounding in the lumbar spine. And I understand all the studies have shown that there is a degree of lumbar flexion in any kind of deadlift or squat movement pattern. I'm not gonna deny that, okay? I'm talking about like a gross looking deadlift, okay? From a beginner who doesn't really know what to do. And a lot of coaches will say, you don't need to screen them. You don't need the corrective exercise or preparatory exercises. You just get them to deadlift again and again and they'll again eventually get it. My first point to that is, is that the best way of doing things? Is that just because you can doesn't mean you should. So if we use basketball as an example, uh, you generally learn not to do behind the back uh, side step three pointers. When you're starting, you learn how to shoot, shoot set shots and three throws. And ideally you wanna get the best shooting mechanics possible because it's gonna to lead to the best performance down the track. I don't understand why we don't apply that same thing to resistance training and treat it more as a skill and something that we use to get a particular outcome rather than just a fitness tool of itself where we can cause generalized adaptation to any tissue. Okay, it just doesn't seem to, it doesn't work in my opinion. I don't think it's the best way of doing things and if a client's paying us, we shouldn't just say it's just great that you're here and give them a slap in the butt and tell them to move on and just deadlift however they feel like and squat however they feel like. Our job is to help people do it better. Okay, and that kind of set the tone for the day. So after that, I was all pumped up, went to the gym, trained back, it was very, very good. Uh, sold session some new uh, machines to use like a T-bar row machine which I haven't had in a gym I've been in for years. Awesome uh, tool for training back. So very successful workout. Got to have breakfast with my wife beforehand. Again, winning. Uh, nice day as well. And then today it was on a calls day. So Doyle was at daycare so I managed to get a heap, done, a heap of calls. And the cool thing was working with clients today. So a lot of the time I speak to PTs, trainers, coaches, etc. And the whole goal is to build their business. And in all honesty, it can get a little bit boring because business development and growth at the different stages of where a business is, is kind of like a just do the thing process and refine the thing until you get better at the thing and it becomes more effective. So it's not that complex in a lot of things and a lot of trainers are just in their own way and stopping themselves from winning. So we don't want to do that. Our job is doing that. When working with clients, there's a whole bunch of different issues that we can work with and like relationship, some of the things today were relationship with food, dealing with coping strategies at work, looking at, you know, uh, timelines for photo shoots, looking at understanding how to use the app and how to get the most out of it and how to periodize what approach we're going to take in terms of nutrition, starting with food journey, moving to tracking, moving to something else. And then also dealing with having young kids and the demands of that with a time poor system with multiple injuries. So a lot more variety in that, but really rewarding to see the, I guess, the quality of impact that you can make on someone's life from helping them solve those particular issues. And it's really cool when you can speak to someone for, you know, half an hour, 15 minutes, a half an hour, and really make a profound change in their life that helps them become better, uh, helps them be a better person, helps them to feel better, move better, Whatever it is, it's a really rewarding thing to do. 
So that was basically the majority of my day. Uh, dinner, free meal out tonight, which is, you know, win. Awesome. Not going to stress too much about a temporary gain in the scale tomorrow. And then back to do the same thing tomorrow as did today with the same degree of intensity. In terms of some of the challenges that we've been facing so far, again, all this stuff in the prep, it's too early to be emotional about it, not eating food. It's more time demands than anything else and making sure I have appropriate levers to pull. So this weekend, it'll be, we're 22 weeks out in two days. So Monday will be the day of the shoot, I guess, on the 20th of October. I'll be looking at, you know, refining the process a little bit more this week and not locking in like all, you know, horns blazing until about 16 weeks out. And the reason for that is you probably want to, a lot of people will say you want to finish, you know, get be prepped eight weeks out. I don't want to hold that condition for that long. I don't want to suffer um, any more than I have to. I'd rather dig deep and then pull out of it a little bit later. I find I do better than that. So at the moment, the issues and the not so good things aren't that big a deal. Uh, just obviously business growth in terms of getting PT clients is a little slow because I spent so much time focusing on building the mentoring business that that kind of got pushed to the wayside. So one of the challenges I'm facing is basically balancing out both those things, okay? Balancing out the good and the bad and, well, it's not both those things, balancing out all the competing demands, go on silent, my God. <laughs> balancing out all the competing demands that we have and then using that to work out where we need to be. Okay, so from reflection and looking at it, I did focus like 95% of my focus on my PT mentoring and business stuff and currently taking a step back from the absolute focus on that, more to strategize and reflect rather than not because I'm not interested in it, but it, I think there's some better ways that it can be done and it's not at the level that I want it to be. I don't think it ever will be. I think that's an ongoing battle, but having a little bit of reflection and away from it to actually work out a better way to do it. And spending more time working with clients because you know what, it's really fun. Um, they're reliable, they can be with you for a long, long time. Uh, they generally have disposable income to pay, which is great. All those things are very, very useful to a business owner. And I think making sure that both those businesses are multiple six-figure entities is a really good way to bulletproof myself in the future. On the weekend, I've also booked a ton of calls for email marketing, learning, uh, social media audits, a whole bunch of stuff to really nail in the marketing because I think it's the weakest part of my message so far. So guys, that's uh, where we're at. Uh, just wanted to share a little bit of the you know, the struggles which are making sure getting the marketing on point and the constant internal struggle of balancing the aspects of the business and then also where you want to be. So not easy, the prep stuff's easy, but at the moment, not easy trying to do it all. You just have to push different levers at different time at times and be okay with certain things. So thanks heaps guys. I will speak to you all tomorrow.